this coffin, but rises every night at sunset. What happened to Gastelum and Frankenstein? My mother, I think, must have taken me to see it, I guess, when it came out, in 1948, I guess that was. I'd never seen a horror movie before. Uh, I, I don't know that I understood who Abbott and Costello were. Uh, and it frightened me uh, to, where I wouldn't even actually look at it. I mostly hid behind the seats. I, you know, I had my head down and I cried, except occasionally I would glimpse the screen and go, oh, ah, you know. It was just sheer panic. It's like the first time you're on a roller coaster, you know, it's just, yeah! You know, I don't, I don't remember anything except the thing of being just frightened, you know. I remember the coffins, too, the opening up the coffins and clearing away the straw, you know. There's this big face, you know, you know. I mean, I just, I was just, yeah, you know, I was afraid. I, I, it scared me really out of my wits, you know. But it, it scared and fascinated me. I was six years old. My father had died the previous year in 47. So that also made it kind of a heavy time in my life emotionally. It was another real thing, a thing, I think, a big effect, a big reason for my clamping onto it, kind of. Um, the thing of, uh, you know, the, a dead thing brought to life. It might have been the, the thing of the, the monster sort of shambling around, you know, that's kind of the boogeyman thing, you know, the can't walk well, you know. <laughs> The transformation, you know, or uh, Dracula changes into that bat, you know, just in the shadows. It's so beautiful. It's animated. It really looks great. The Wolfman transformation, which I always loved. After that, I loved it. You know, I just, that is so cool. I mean, this was a juicy cast, you know, and it was the last time these characters had dignity. The hypnosis thing, too, that's, that's another part of that same thing. It's the, you know, there's a powerful consciousness and there's a weak consciousness, you know, and, and one of them is going to dominate the other. It's interesting how the course of uh, Western science has gone along the DNA discoveries and so forth, that these things all have to do with this, this drive to reanimate or to, to uh, produce life, you know what I mean? In the sense, uh, Frankenstein's monster, after all, is a science project, finally. For me, the, the iconography, the, the Frankenstein's monster, Dracula, and the Wolfman, became figures of tremendous fascination for me. I mean, overwhelming. I mean, it led me, for example, things like the discovery of German Expressionist theater and film, you know what I mean? The James Whale original Frankenstein is so beautiful, beautiful lighting, beautiful sets, you know, the great angular stuff and the great power, you know, of it. Uh, the thing, the Dracula character, the, you know, these things are all they're icons in my life. They're personal icons. I, a lot of people, I mean, uh, they have tremendous power. Here's the electrodes. And then these, these are interesting, too, these staples. These, you only see these after the Bride of Frankenstein, I think, when he gets burned. He gets burned. And then exposes these staples. I was wondering, where's that flat head come from? You know, whose idea was that? And I, I got to thinking, well, maybe the makeup guy decided he wanted to do something to make the creature distinctly not human, you know, like v different in a visual way. For me, that movie uh, is the start of my fascination, first of all, with movies. You know, I mean, uh, and I am a filmmaker also. Uh, and the, the visual component is an important part of my life. I'm uh, uh, an art school person and so forth. I do art is the other thing I do besides music. I used to draw pictures of the Frankenstein monster over and over, you know, endlessly in different positions and different configurations. And I studied carefully the old Jack Pierce makeup, you know, what it looked like. And I, I mean, I, I was totally absorbed. I became totally absorbed. I think part of it had to do with the thing of being afraid the first time I saw it, the thing of it having that power of fear over me. I think there was some uh, desire on my part to embrace that. You know, to, to, to make that, to, to, to not let that control me that way. That, that whole business evoked something. It's like touched something, you know what I mean? Something, I don't, I don't know what, something very strong. And it hit me in that, in that archetypal thing. It hit, it hit me right in the Jungian center, you know, boom, you know, dong, you know. Comedy. And the thing of being funny is uh, it's a smart 
strategy, you know, to get by, you know, in life if you're not powerful, if you're not huge, if you're not muscular, if you're not, if you don't, if intimidation is too much work for you, you know what I mean? It, it works good at disarming powerful adversaries. Costello's a remarkable comedian. His very, very broad physical style of comedy fits beautifully with the sense of this movie, you know what I mean? In other words, it's as big as the scary part. I see him as a power figure because he does, he prevails, you know, you know he, does, he does in fact win, you know, and that's, uh, you know, that's like, that's, that's a lot of power for the little guy too, you know what I mean, which is also another thing that that whole movie kind of is, like it's the little guy. The little guy never, nobody believes him. When you're a kid, it's like being a kid, because I was a kid, he's the kid. You know, he's he's the he's the person, the youngest person in the family. He's, you know what I mean? He's the he's the one that no that nobody believes. And uh, now get out of here! You know what are you talking about? I have a general fascination with the bizarre. You know that that comes directly from that movie. You know that's that, that was my first sense of there are things in this world that are really weird. You know, I don't think I knew that before before I saw that movie. That uh, there are things that are really weird, and there are people who are concerned with them. <laughs> you know, in some way that became important to me, and I guess I thought to myself on some level. I think I want to be concerned with things that are weird. I, I think that seems interesting to me because it, it seems like fun. Hi there. Hello. Frond, frond. <laughs> and uh, that, that's, that is in fact who I am. <laughs>